Before this video starts, I'd like to quickly say two things. Um, if you are interested in a shout out on my channel, I will be doing one. So just leave your comment saying I want a shout out in the comment section box below, and I'll give you a shout out. I will be doing one. I'm not promising exactly when, but it should be within a week. And also consider subscribing to my channel. Um, the reason I'm doing this shout out is because so many new people have subscribed and I decided to welcome them this way. So thank you guys so much for the continued support and let's get on with the video. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Hopefully you guys are all having a wonderful day. Today's upload is going to be hopefully a bit shorter than most episodes. Um, it's going to be me answering the question, how will an El Nino impact this winter? or an El Nino Modokai, I'll get into what I mean by that in a minute. And this is obviously for the years 2018-2019. So, first off, we need to look at um, the ENCO out or ENSO outlook. And the EN or ENZO neutral is favored through July through September 2018, with an El Nino favored thereafter. Chances for an El Nino are near 70% during Northern Hemisphere winter 2018-2019. So what we get from this, from NOAA's outlook, is that a El Nino is forecasted to be during this winter. But there is a catch to this, and I'll explain that in a minute. But first, let's check under confidence. So right here states 70%, and if we go to November, December, January, you can see that is 70% confidence in an, sorry, in an El Nino. However, um, there's a kind of a difference between a weak El Nino and just a strong El Nino. Those differences are um, tend to be more um, not as big as there would be the difference if an El Nino Modokai would form. That's why focuses. That's why we'll focus on an El Nino Modokai possibly forming. So um, let's move on and a typical. If you don't even know well, like what an El Nino even does, if you you don't really even need to know what an El Nino does. All you need to do know is how an El Nino impacts your area. So if you live in the northern part of the United States, say Minnesota, you'll most likely get a slightly warmer and drier winter. And if you live in the south, you'll get a wetter and cooler. So yes, that would mean more snow in the south compared to average, but that does not mean the south would get more snow than the north. It would just mean that based on average, the north would see below average and the north south would see above average in terms of snow. So this is how an El Nino typical pattern looks like. However, earlier I was mentioning that there's a catch to this, and what I meant by that is in the sea surface temperatures. So, um, if you don't know where even an El Nino comes from, an El Nino is measured basically the waters in the equatorial Pacific Ocean um, off the coast of South, Amer uh, South, South America. And these waters, depending on how above average they are, determine how strong the El Nino and their placement also, also determines what type of El Nino. So you could see during an SST, SST during El Ninos looks something like this. So sea surface temperatures. And here you see the red that is much above average. And you could see that um, going from the whole Pacific Ocean and you were from Oceania, Oceania all the way to South America. You can see these waters are more s eastern based or during an El Nino. However, during an El Nino Modoka, you could see that um, the waters are more central based and it's just not as profound here by the coast. There's some cooler conditions by the coast, warmer conditions in the center, and then cooler conditions in the West, but you may be wondering, how is this not a La Nina? Well, there's just not cold, cool enough temperatures to qualify this as a La Nina. It's considered a weak El Nino if El Nino Madokai forms, but it's a different type of El Nino if that makes any sense. So, you may be wondering why why am I assuming that this year we might see an El Nino Madokai? Well, um, based on a couple of other people's opinions, meteorologists' opinions, some patterns, um, the main factor what I like to look at are obviously this current sea surface temperatures. If the, if the El Nino Modoka is determined based off SST. So this is what it looks like currently. And as you can see, it's in a disarray here down here. There's some signs of an La Nina. Um, you can see that's just like, it's just a mess at this point. And yes, I know this would change and this will definitely start getting warmer. And it has been getting warmer for the past couple of weeks. But um, at this point, what I want you guys to take away from this is not that an El Nino Modokai will be forming because this is how it looks like right now. It's just that an, we have an equal chance of an El Nino Modokai forming as we do an El Nino. So I feel like it's fairly important to um, distinguish those two because one occurring may have a completely different outcome than the other than the other one if that one occurs. So um, you may be wondering, well, what is it going to be the outcome? So 
This is um, air temperatures during a regular, not regular, this, this is during a Modoka El Nino. And anywhere you see the blue is below average temperatures, and anywhere you see the green, red, yellow, that is above average temperatures. So you can see November through March, which is the winter months, 2010, all these years were El Nino Modoka years. And you could see that much of the country was below average, especially parts of the south, southeast. But um, parts of the northwest were a bit above average, but again, not, nothing too terribly above average. And now, if we were to compare this to a regular old El Nino, you can see it's it's a lot different. Um, there are definitely a lot of differences in this. Um, there, you can see first of all what pops up to you is that there's a lot less blue colors and there's a lot more yellow, orange, greenish colors, which means there's much of the country is above average in terms of temperatures, while the you know parts of the south, not even the whole south, um, parts of the south are below average and a couple other areas are just around average. But you can see that these differences in temperatures um, make a huge difference. An El Nino Modokai versus an El Nino Modoka here, which is an El Nino, create huge differences, even though they may not sound like they would, because El Nino Modoka has the same first two words as El Nino does. Um, it's just, there's just so much differences that we need to notice this. We need to notice this and keep an eye on it, because these two things could change the complete outcome of winter. And um, in terms of precip now, so now we're talking about snowfall, rain, um, severe weather, all that. You can see that during an El Nino Modokai, so that's when the waters are more central based in the Pacific Ocean, the warm waters. You can see that U.S. rainfall anomalies seem, you know, more moist on the eastern side of the country, the eastern half of the country, and more drier on the western half of the country. So again, that would impact the snow totals. It would bring more snow to the eastern half of the country and more less snow to parts of the west. However, I am not saying this will happen. All I'm saying is um, that we could see it equally as much as we could see this, which is during an El Nino, you could see that um, wetter than normal for much of the west and then drier for parts of the east, but not the whole part of the east. But anywhere, when I refer to east, I mean east of the Rockies. So um, you can see, see still, still see that during an El Nino, um, not all locations in the east are below average. But again, the temperatures would play a huge role in this. So that would make the snow turn into rain and then not be snow if it's warmer than average. could still be wetter than normal, but if it's above average, that will most likely be rain and not snow, depending on what time of the year, obviously. But... Um, that is basically it for today's video, guys. I told you it was a quick one. I didn't really make a map about this. If we were to sum this up in a couple of words, basically, I think this year we have a chance of seeing um, below average temperatures in the southeast, about a line where it's going right along here, basically where this blue and perimeter ends. I think that's where we could see all below average temperatures. Anywhere in the middle here is equal chances and then here in the northwest is above. That's so how I think that El Nino will impact the temperatures. Snowfall, I think that in general areas, I think it will be a bigger area that areas somewhere right here, especially along the east coast, could see above average snowfall. The plains, midwest could see around average, maybe slightly below average, and then the northwest should see fairly below average if the El Nino Modokai plays out, and which I do think it might this year. Um, if the El Nino plays out, which we saw earlier, El Nino looks something like this, I do think that um, the southeast will be in... Um, I think just the southeast will be around average. The east coast during an El Nino Modokai would also be below average in temperatures, but during an El Nino would be above, so that would cut down on the snowfall for the east coast. The Midwest would be below average in snowfall and above average in temps. Not necessarily below average in terms of precip, just snowfall. Because again, if it's warmer and there's precip falling from the sky, it could still fall as rain and count as precip, but not as snowfall. And then you can see, obviously, during an El Nino, there are some parts of the country that are cooler. That tends to be the south, so maybe parts of the central southern United States could see a cooler. I think the best bet for a cold winter this year will be states like Oklahoma, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, possibly Tennessee, South Carolina, Florida, Louisiana, Texas, and maybe as far west as New Mexico. And those states are almost... 
I have a fairly high confidence that they will be below average, whether an El Nino Madokai performance or an El Nino. And then um, the Northwest, either way, I think should be below uh, above average in terms of temperatures and below average in terms of snowfall. So that is another place I'm fairly confident being the Northwest above average in terms of temperatures. So guys, that is basically it for today's video. Um, hopefully you guys all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And consider subscribing to my channel. Consider liking the video. It really helps out a lot. Um, I've been recently getting a lot of subscribers. And I'd like to thank you guys so much for that. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys all in the next episode.